apart from Silent Hill, Mortal Kombat. Prince of Persia, maybe. I enjoyed Prince of Persia. And Warcraft. Video game movies suck balls. And not in a good way. Brass tags. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Brass Tacks in his bitch, you already know. You already know, goddammit. I got too many movies to review. So let's just get on with it. Michael Fassbender. Let's just talk about his surname for a sec. Fassbender. Doesn't Fassbender sound like an insult in this bitch? Like a German insult. Ah, guten Tag, you Fassbender, you. Sound like an insult in this bitch. Let's not mess around. I would hate to have a surname like that. I hate my real name anyway, but not... I'd hate that shit more. But he's famous and he's a pretty good actor. I got time for him. I love the games. I didn't like Assassin's Creed 1. I didn't like Assassin's Creed 2. I didn't like 3. I loved Black Flag. That was amazing. I didn't like Unity at all. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, I liked too, but all the others kind of fell a bit short. But yeah, the premise of those games were pretty cool. I liked the idea of that shit. And someone had a great idea of putting that to movie. And I saw the trailers and I was happy with the direction they were going in. Come to find out, they fucked up. So Michael Fassbender, obviously, he's like a criminal, he's serving time, whatever, been sentenced to death, and he wakes up to find that he's needed to be used in an animus which helps him go back in time to his ancestry because only his ancestors can help find the key to some bullshit. I'm saying this very loosely. What ensues is a convoluted plot, a snooze fest, with great cinematography and great action in this bitch. There is a good movie in here. There is. There are moments of greatness in this movie. I'm not even gonna lie to you. The problem is, 80% of the movie sucks balls. This shit is boring. Sounds pretty straightforward, and ain't even that straightforward. It tries to get all twisty and turny and shit. And I'm not going to say much more about the plot, because you can't really, because this, you know, it's going to fuck things up if you actually decide to watch it. The cinematography is beautiful. It is PG, or is a PG-13, whatever. You are watching this, and it feels every bit of the PG-13 in this bitch. It feels when you're watching it like it was designed to be a PG movie. There are certain scenes where you should be seeing blood and everything all over the place, but you don't get that shit. It's like WWE these days. When you're about to see something vicious in action scenes, it cuts away. That's fucked up. I think the right amount of violence could have, re it could have redeemed the movie a little bit in my eyes. Very frustrating because everyone acts very well in it. Is it Jeremy Irons also in it? Acts very well. Everyone is doing, is taking this movie seriously, but here's a problem with games, with game movies, right? They either A, try to stick so close to the game. You can't. Not with a game like Assassin's Creed. That shit takes like 20, 30 hours to complete in this bitch so they can afford to space things out. The bits where he is the assassin are pretty interesting. There's only three times he is the assassin in this bitch, yeah? The other few times, it comes back to present time. That shit is boring. That shit was boring in the games too in this bitch. Jeremy Jones said this, right? And I agree with him 100%. As he's moving as the assassin, in real time, he's equipped to this machine and he's moving. So if he jumps, he jumps as the assassin. Do you see what I'm saying? It cuts back and forth between action. You're getting used to a scene, you're thinking, all right, shit gonna hit the fan. What am I seeing him for pretending to do this shit? Do you know what I mean? He's really doing it, but it takes away from the action. There were some bad choices made, and because of those bad choices, it hurt the movie. Before we get started, I just want to say that the 1080p Blu-ray of this is region free. So if you wanted to import it, you're not going to have a problem paying the standard Blu-ray at all. Here's another thing, and I, I know this has become uh, a regular thing, but I'm sorry, I just can't find it. I don't know what the visual effects are, but I'm pretty sure they're weighing in at 2K. Aspect ratio 235.1. You got the black bars. Shot in 3.4K and 6.5K. Visual effects 2K. Digital Intermediate, 4K. Dolby Atmos Sound. I had some of you commenting on the unboxing I did. And you guys said, I'm not interested in this bitch. I don't even know why you unbox this bitch. I hate this movie. The only reason I would pick this up is if it was a really good transfer or reference quality. If that's the way you feel, you better get your wallet out. Because it's a reference quality transfer in this bitch. God Damn, people. 
Let's just talk about the clarity first. It looks gorgeous. Everything from the close-up to pores, pupils, textures, scenery looks beautiful. Two words with this transfer is razor sharp. It is an obvious, substantial upgrade from the 1080p. I ain't gonna fuck around with this bitch. Depth of field is A1. You, there are certain scenes which actually pop out of the screen. You really do feel it. You can tell, you know, I keep talking about layers. You can tell the layers with this movie 100%. It really does have a nice three-dimensional pop to it. Nice, nice depth. Black levels are very, very good. There are certain scenes that happen at night and you can make out everything very clearly. So black levels are a win too, God damn it. I'll tell you what is gorgeous on this, the one that really pushes it over the edge and that's the HDR. God damn, the HDR looks gorgeous. It's obvious from the minute you slide the disc in, yeah? It is obvious as hell. The wider color space is also obvious. You're noticing nuances and colors that you just can't see on the 1080p. You know what it does with 1080p? It takes the 1080p disc here, it puts it right here, and then it does that to the 1080p. That's what it does to the 1080p, I ain't gonna lie to you. Now you still have gold standards. Revenant Sully and Billy Lynn, right? It doesn't quite go up to those standards, but it does beat those standards in certain scenes. It is a gorgeous, transfer people. I said to myself I wasn't going to watch it. I said I was just going to flick through this bitch. It is gorgeous. CGI looks great too. I didn't see anything that stood out. I didn't know what to expect from 20th Century Fox, but they came through on this bitch. I don't know what to say. It's a beautiful transfer. It is a beautiful transfer. The movie's got so much potential. You can see the potential there. There's a really great movie in there. You just can't find the bitch. Saying that, the transfer is fantastic. There are some demo-worthy shots in that bitch. It's reference. It's on the reference list. Would you pick it up? Well, if you don't like the movie, you don't like the movie. If you're going to hate the movie, you're probably not going to watch it. I would probably wait for a really deep discount. Sorry, guys. I couldn't check out the sound because I was watching it here today. Go check out my boys over at Spare Change. Now, I've shouted them out before. Uh, they got an Atmos set up. So, when they review this... Because I'm beating you to it because last time when Passengers came out, I had that shit before you and you guys put it out before me. That was the first and last time that shit gonna happen. All jokes. Not really. Yeah, so check it out. They'll give you a review in the Atmos sound, but I couldn't, guys. But it is a gorgeous transfer. I will say that. I hope you enjoyed the review. Definitely comment if you've got any opinions about it. If you do pick it up, tell me what you guys think. And that's pretty much it. I will catch you next time.